Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Cobbs. Welcome back to BrainCancer.org series of lectures on Brain Tumors 101. Well, as I mentioned in the last discussion, typically someone will present with a new sudden onset of weakness or seizures. They will go to the emergency room, a CAT scan or MRI scan will be performed, and then the patient will either go directly to a neurosurgeon or they will go to a clinic appointment with a, a neurologist or a neurosurgeon. Um, the neurosurgeon will then have to decide how to make the definitive diagnosis. So almost in 100% of the cases, we recommend that a patient have surgical biopsy at least to confirm a diagnosis of what is expected to be a brain tumor. And based on the size of the tumor and the location, multiple novel technologies that we have at our fingertip may be utilized. I'd like to describe, for instance, some of the considerations that a neurosurgeon will put into uh, making these decisions. If this is uh, a model of the brain, uh, for the typical person who's right-handed, the language function is typically located in the frontal lobe on the left side and in the parietal and temporal lobe region on the left side. If someone has a tumor that's near one of these locations, it may be quite complex in terms of making a surgical resection. And sometimes we will use a pre-operative MRI called functional MRI to map out where the language areas of the brain are for the patient with a non-invasive MRI technology. If there is still evidence of tumor right near the language area, we may have to uh, resort to a surgery where we wake the patient up during the surgery so that we can remove as much tumor as we can safely while exploring the language function of the patient. Typically the patients will be asked to name objects and carry on conversation uh, and uh, patients usually tolerate this fairly well and we will try to remove as much tumor as we can up to the point of causing any problem with the language function. Another area of uh, critical brain function that we try to avoid is the uh, motor cortex. Shown here in this purple band, uh, the motor cortex is in the frontal lobe and is the primary area for movement of the other side of the body. So for instance, a tumor that was located right here on the right side of the brain, if it interferes with this portion of the motor cortex, could cause weakness in the left arm, for instance, or if it's located here, could cause a weakness in the left leg. And similarly, sometimes we wake patients up, or more frequently, we let them sleep during the procedure and we can stimulate around these areas where the tumor appears to be to see if it's involved in the primary motor region. And then we limit our surgery to that area to avoid interfering with the patient's motor function postoperatively. Some tumors arise in the very back of the brain, and this is called the occipital cortex. And the occipital cortex on the left side controls all the visual field from the midline to the right, and vice versa, the visual cortex on the left, on the right side controls visual field on the left. So a patient may have a tumor in this area and may lose some of their peripheral vision on the other side. The best case scenario would be a tumor, for instance, in a silent area of the brain that could be removed in its entirety. And so, for instance, a tumor that arises at the tip of the right frontal lobe would be a tumor where the surgeon would most likely try to be very aggressive in terms of getting all of the tumor out and even some uh, adjacent brain tissue to avoid any uh, or decrease the likelihood of the tumor coming back. So, in general, when the patients go to the neurosurgeon after a diagnosis of brain tumor, at most top centers in the country now, every effort will be made to remove as much tissue, tumor tissue as possible, given the considerations of safety and um, 
often the patient's tumor will be used uh, for research studies or vaccine studies at these top institutions. And these are the kind of things patients should be aware of prior to uh, having neurosurgical procedure done. And so they can ask the appropriate questions to see if they are candidates for some of these clinical trials that may make a dif difference in their outcome. Thank you.